How's it going, community? Columbia State Community College? Welcome to the Smash Ultimate Esports, Smash Ultimate Virtual Esports Open, brought to you by Bravis Esports. My goodness, I'm tripping on myself today. I am Jim. I'll be your caster for today. I'll be your MC, and uh, we're getting things going right away. We've got all of our matches called in the announcements section of the Discord. So if you have not seen, this is specifically the Community State, Columbia State, I'm gonna be making that mistake all day. Columbia State Community College Smash Discord, not the bravest Discord that you'll find from the exclamation mark Discord command. If you are in that and you're part of the tournament, then you'll find your matches in announcements. Uh, announcements is where you'll want to be. You'll get pinged by our organizer, Syncrity. Uh, big shout outs to Syncrity. He's been doing a lot of these tournaments for us in the past. Always does a great job. First up on stream, we're going to have WTKA versus Epsilon, it's looking like. Uh, we, however, have clever name in the lobby here with us which we shouldn't have because they have a round one buy um so it, clever name uh, we've got the lobby restricted to just three players uh if you could please not be in this particular lobby so that uh we can get the person who's supposed to be playing in here that would be great Here we are. Uh, clever name. We would need you to actually leave here. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do this the mean way. There we go. And then I am assuming that kids love me is either WTKA or Epsilon. I think probably WTKA, but hard for me to be able to to say there. Looking to see if we've got a Discord username that would give this away. Does not look like it. It looks like uh, they didn't actually put a Discord username in there for us. But WTKA, where are the kids at? So kids love me. That's a pretty safe bet. All right, so we are waiting for Epsilon. Hopefully that is Omega V Trig. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross my fingers and, and hope that that is in fact the case there. All right. This is going to be on the most recent patch of the game, uh, which I think is really exciting for us here. Uh, we're gonna get to see all of the new characters. I mean, not Obviously, there's a new character here, Pyra and Mithra, uh, but also we're going to get to see all of the buffs and nerfs and see how that impacts our play as well. Um, there's some pretty significant Pichu buffs for some reason. Not really sure why uh, Pichu needed that. He's top tier for a little while there, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, we've got a whole bunch of changes to landing lag. I believe it is on when you're hit by an attack and bounce off the floor. Um, I believe there were some characters that had more vulnerability during that bounce animation than others, and so they have uh, standardized all of that so that all the characters are getting the exact same treatment when they get knocked down. Pyra, absolutely. We got some Xenoblade fans in the audience. You, you love to see it. Love to see it. Um, the uh, Discord, by the way, that Sen Fizzy has brought up in the chat here is the Bravest Community Discord. Uh, Bravis is an esports organization dedicated to helping build community grassroots scenes from the ground up. Um, we do production, we do event planning, do a bunch of stuff to try and help other groups get their esports groups off and running. Um, we use our experience from previous events that we've run, uh, from previous events that our organizers have run. I, for instance, was a collegiate organizer back in the day. Uh, so we can do things like consulting as well, um, plenty of different resources, and you can also just head into our Discord to talk with other people who play the games. So feel free to jump in there if you would like. It's the exclamation mark Discord command in our stream chat. Also, 
we have a request from the school to give you these questions here. The first straw poll that you'll see there in chat is what day of the week works best for the next virtual esports open that they're going to run with us. And the second poll is which game you would prefer to play in that next virtual esports open that you do with us. Um, we took all of the recommendations that you put in at registration and we put them all on the poll there. So now not only can we see, you know, which games people want to play, but we can see how many of y'all want to play them. So that's where you can go to give us feedback on which games you want to see next at our virtual esports opens. Right now, WTKA, uh, Kids Love Me, and Omega V Trig, who I believe is Epsilon, should be going through the stage striking procedure. For those of you who haven't competed in a competitive Smash event before, or maybe not one quite like this, we have a procedure that you should read up on in match procedure for how we choose the characters and stages that we're going to play on in the first match. Both players will choose their characters and they'll know which characters are involved in the match before they start to choose the stage. And then we have a stage list that they're going to start off with. There are five neutral stages, five of the stages that are the fairest in the game, uh, the fairest in all the land. And those are the stages that you'll start off with. One player will ban one, another player will ban two, and then the other player will ban one. And from there, uh, we'll play round one. And then there's another procedure for how to arrive at the stage for the next games. So this is something you're not familiar with. Definitely read up on that match procedure. Go through it step by step. Just kind of walk through it, think through it. It'll make sense after you do it a, a once or twice. And then you'll be on your way and you'll be able to get through that process a little bit more quickly. Uh, but there is a little bit of thinking involved at the beginning of the match. And uh, presumably that's what's going on here with our players trying to figure it all out here. We've got a question in help desk. Does choosing random count as a character choice? Holy moly. What a ballsy play. We have actually seen that before. Um, there was a player named Landslide, I believe. I forget which uh, school he was from off the top of my head. Uh, but Landslide went into the school event knowing that he was going to win by a landslide. And literally every single match, even through grand finals, was just picking a random character. Um, and beating everybody with it, too. It was insane. Like, the, the ultimate power move. I mean, random. May lose on the first fight, but it'll be fun. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, get Simon. Uh, pay attention to uh, the Discord just in case you get pinged by our organizer. Just making sure that all of the matches are going off the way that they need to be. It is looking like they are starting to ready up here, so. Should be getting some action in a second. All right, we got a DDD and a Mario. Uh, so King DDD, I believe, did actually get some buffs in the most recent patch. Uh, Mario, I believe, was not touched. This is Mr. Pink. There we go. All right. Oh no, I got the wrong color. I gotta fix it. There it is. All right, away we go. So we've got King DDD, Mario. This is going to be a... Uh, I feel like this is going to be a challenge for the DDD just not to get hit. Um, Mario, very strong combo game. Um, has ladder combos off the top. Um, so it's going to be a question of how well DDD can keep him out. But fortunately, he's very well equipped to do exactly that. Very long range, very big disjoint on the hammer. And the Gordos. Oh my goodness, the Gordos. Um... There's a lot of interesting counterplay around those Gordos. You can hit them back at DDD. 
but he can hit them back at you, and the uh, speed at which he hits them back at you is actually one of the things that was touched in the patch. Uh, it is going to be a little bit more difficult for the player to react if you get into the, that goofy Legend of Zelda playing tennis with Ganondorf sort of moment there. Um, oh, this is such a tough situ situation. He needs to tech this. Okay. Epsilon managing to survive. Didn't actually tech it, but maybe he got a weird bounce there or something. So he just went straight up afterwards. Oof. Just rolling away, throwing Gordos. Playing it ultra fast here. Let me know if the uh, sound is a, a little bit off in the levels there. It's not always the easiest thing to gauge how good that is just from looking at the little green bars on your screen. Steve main uh, Ocelis? I'm going to go with Ocelis. Uh, feel free to correct my pronunciation there if I'm wrong. We love us our meme numbers, our funny numbers. Funny haha -ha jokes. WTKA playing extremely cautious. Does not want to take an awful lot more percentage. Keeps getting clicked by projectiles here and there, and that is starting to add up a little bit, but he's DD. He lasts a pretty long time. In the meantime, Epsilon. Being the aggressor, despite being down a bit of percent and actually going down there for it. Whew. Just rolling out of there. TKA wants nothing to do with it. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> he knew what he was doing, but it spooked me for just a second. Always got to make sure that you, uh, you know how you're getting back to the stage when you go out there. Sometimes people get a little excited. Sometimes people just go and do things. Nice little up tilts. Not gonna capitalize too much off of that. Gets a forward tilt and pokes the shield. Oh! That little dash dance there. That little stutter step. Those little footsies. Throwing Epsilon off and just landing a raw up smash out of nowhere. Whacking Mario up off the top. Isn't Mario the one who's supposed to be using the hammers against the bad guys? Tables have turned. Maybe hammers are top tier in the Smash universe. Maybe Mario's onto something here. All right, so we're we're cheating a little. We're cheating a little because you've already seen one match of this, but that might just make it a little more interesting. We're gonna run a prediction here. All right, you're gonna be able to bet your channel points on who you think our winner is going to be. I'm gonna ask you who you got. We got two minutes to lock that in. Is it going to be WTKA or do we bet on the underdog? Do we bet on the 2 0 comeback from Epsilon? Match was reasonably close. Epsilon finds his punish game, could definitely have brought that back. So, who you got? All right, Epsilon stepping out, picking the character here. Blue Waluigi. Man, we're, we're, we're really hurting for uh, the lack of his inclusion, aren't we? Ooh, we've got to switch to Snake now.
So a significant improvement in his character's derriere. Uh, although it has been significantly nerfed since Smash 4. Also has significantly longer legs and uh, more explosives than before. So we'll see if these very meaningful changes to gameplay end up bringing it home for Epsilon. Ooh, shielding that is very spooky. Um, DDD does a buttload of shield damage with that uh, up B he lands on top of you. Um, sort of like Bowser's down B that can just crush your shield right away. So, you gotta be careful to uh, do a dodge. Maybe just get yourself away. Get yourself out of dodge. <laughs> I I'm here till Thursday. Uh, and uh, avoid the move rather than trying to tank it on your shield. Got the C4 out, but uh, did not mean wave bounce back that far, I don't think. There's a B reverse. I can never keep those techniques straight. Got a nice little jab string out of Epsilon. Tries to drop the grenade. Doesn't quite connect with one of them, but the other one does hit. And the penguin blows up. Uh, under normal circumstances, I would say using explosives on a penguin is a bit overkill. But this is a fairly special penguin. Um, it's a penguin that beat him up last round. So I think the, uh, the, the lethal use of force might, might have a better argument here. Ooh. Very nice little short hop. Knowing that the DDD is just going to put out a dash attack there, knowing his range is. And he just stands back, throws things. I'm trying to play the uh, DDD Gordo game back at him, basically. Stay away, throw things, go in when you know you're going to be able to hit him. Otherwise, just play it safe. Drops to C4, tries to go for the explosion, and instead just gets hit by a Gordo. DTKA trying to read a jump out of shield and uh, not finding it, so Epsilon going to find his way back down. Super Mario Lord, everybody laughs when a character just face plants on the screen. It's one of the most glorious things that can happen in Smash Bros. Pretty sure that's been in the game since, like, Smash 64, right? I know it was in in Melee. I don't remember if you get that sort of thing. I think with Smash 64, they just kind of fly down past the camera. But then it's in Melee where they actually start, like, splatting up against the screen. But it, it is legitimately peak physical comedy. Alright, WTKA with a very, very narrow lead right now. No damage whatsoever on the next stock as the commentator's curse. He does he does damage on the next stock. I apologize to Epsilon. I know not what I do. And explosion. All right, this is a really solid chance that Epsilon's got here. He needs to not roll into a random up smash, which he doesn't. He will get the shield out in time. Oh, that's a lot of damage that's going out right now. You can tell he's a little bit nervous. He's not quite finding the timing for a lot of his, his openings here. I think uh, WTKA is playing a lot more confident right now, a lot more under control. Oh, and that just does it. Oh, no. Tournament nerves are going to do that to you sometimes. Wins. So there it is. That is the 2-0 victory for WTKA over Epsilon. So we're not out of it yet for Epsilon. This is a double elimination bracket, which means that you need to lose twice before you are out. Uh, we're not just talking about those game losses here. We are talking about the best of three as a whole. You need to lose two of those before you're out of there. A complete 50-50 split between WTKA and Epsilon on the results prediction there. Does end up going to WTKA. Congratulations to those who predicted them. For the time being, though, we are going to need to get 
a new match onto the stream. And so as such, at least one of y'all will need to leave, unfortunately. Um, I have yet to check out the bracket here. Next up is WTKA versus Super Mario Lord at 64. So WTKA, don't go anywhere. We're keeping you right around for this. But we're putting you up against Super Mario Lord 64. You, you think they're a Mario player? I would actually bet against them being a Mario player, but I'm going to put up the Mario icon just because I think it's, you know, the right icon for them. Alrighty. <laughs> An ice cream truck this just ran by outside. I wonder if you guys could hear that. That would be hilarious if you guys could hear that. Alright, Super Mario Lord 64, that is the clearest tag that I've ever read. Thank you Super Mario Lord 64 for making it very easy to tell that the right person is in the room. Coming in with the mushroom icon, true to form. Ice cream is Pog. All right, we've got a Sonic player now. Hmm. So I'm gonna ask the same question I asked before. Just this time. Three, two, one, go! It's gonna be Super Mario Lord 64 and WTKA. You got two minutes, scout him out. But then I wanna know. You got. All right. I don't know if Sonic's sexuality has ever been made canon. I think it has been made canon that he's like 15 or something. So like, I don't know. Probably, probably not something that uh, anyone's really wanted to tackle for that reason. Oh, no. A missed recovery from Super Mario Lord 64 there. Unfortunate. Let's see how they can bring themselves back out of this. I would just like to point out the irony that uh, Super Mario Lord 64 with the, the mushroom icon is playing against the biggest competitor to the Super Mario series from back in the day. And that almost feel like feels like it's meant to be like ironic on purpose. It feels like it's memeing. This is true, Piano Man. Uh, he does like human women, which is very unsettling, I, I would just like to point out. Um, but uh, that that is unfortunately canonical. There are, there are a lot of things from that game that I'm sure uh, it's a little unfortunate that they're canonical, but that's, uh, that's one of the go-tos, I would definitely say. Female game theory, they'll, they'll challenge, they'll, yeah. Matt Pat is our man. If he can't do it, well, somebody else probably can, but they won't. A reverse furry, an anti-furry, an inverse of furrydom. Uh, I'm gonna have to give that one a hard maybe. All right, we got a villager out now. See if he can chop this penguin down. I'm 
a fever dream. Absolutely. Man, what a, what a game. Imagine being a dev on that game and just being like, wow, this, this game is... This game is going to turn out pretty bizarre right now. Everything is just very surreal. Even so far, I think the uh, ooh, going down with the ship there is Super Mario Lord 64 and deciding not to bail out off of the little rocket, the Lloyd, and uh, getting punished for it with a, an up air that is close enough to the ceiling to just take him out. Ooh, and he falls back down on top of the dash attack. Uh, it looks like uh, Super Mario Lord 64 is uh. He's holding in sometimes. He's kind of like, even when he's at disadvantage, he's still trying to hit his opponent instead of trying to get away. Uh, I think knowing when to disengage, you know, knowing that falling down on top of this player probably not going to result in what I'm looking for uh, is sometimes the better option. But does manage to hit him with the Lloyd Rocket there, and so has him off the stage here, keeping a healthy amount of distance in between him and the DDD. Great spot dodge there. Ooh, almost gets hit with a hammer there. He's just falling down right on top of the DDD. I think that's one of the uh, big reasons that DDD's been getting his KO openings here. Um, Super Mario Lord needs to be a little bit more evasive on the way down from the air. Let's be able to get away. Also needs to be bailing out of these Lloyd Rockets. It almost looks like uh, doesn't know that it's an option. I don't think I've seen him do it once. Oh, no. He only has the one balloon, and he's down. WTKA going down to try and pop the balloons, knowing he's got the extra stocks to spare. He's patting his, his very, very ample belly. Almost... Uh, Almost making it look like he ate him or something. Like, I, I, what, what, what's that about? Is that, that's some, like, g gorilla thing? Where you're like, Ugh. I don't know. It, weird way to display dominance, but you know what? It used to be a status symbol to be able to be fat because you had enough food that you could get yourself fat. So maybe, maybe that's what he's going for. Sonic and Isabel make a good couple. I mean, hmm. I don't know. Asking for Matt Pat. Ready? Oh, are they playing a third time? Pretty sure that was the match right there. Um, that is a 2-0 victory for WTKA. Um, Three, might two, have to... One, oh, wow. Are we locked in on this? I think if I hit quit... Yeah, okay. Um, we're, we're probably going to have to shut this game down here. Oh, so let's, let's, let's keep it a little bit less racy. Um, bonus round. I hope they reported their score at least. I don't know that they did that. One sec, typing an angry uh, email to the manager. I'm checking out the challenge bracket really quick. Uh, you can find the challenge bracket at the link that I'm about to copy and paste into the chat here. 
taking a quick look see yes this is winner's semifinals so this should not be a best of five uh they're just going for a joy ride right now so uh <clears throat> Do we do we do we do it, kids? Do we give them the boot? To be fair, there isn't another match that can actually get played right now. Uh, we're waiting on John the Man and Odi One Kenodi. <laughs> what a, a clever name! Uh, the winner of that will play against clever name. I don't even have to kick him. Uh, WTK won fast enough. Quick reminder, folks, that when you are finished with your matches, please go into score reporting of the Discord and let us know. Because uh, ain't nobody done that yet. And so that means that RTO doesn't know how to update the bracket, which uh, will make us take a little bit longer than it needs to. So make sure that you're going in there and dropping at for both of your opponents. So both you and your opponent. Um, that way they can confirm that that score was correct. You didn't make a typo. You didn't you didn't try to, to steal their lunch money from them. Anything like that. And uh, make sure to give the set count as well. So maybe put, in this case, at WTKA2. And then maybe a dash or something. And then at Super Mario Lord 64, 0. Something like that. And that'll show us who the winner was. It'll show us what the score was. Give us everything we need to know, as well as alerting the, your, your opponent that you have reported the match. What Epsilon did in there was perfect. Perfecto. Gone scoot. Excelente. Score reporting channel is in the Columbia State Community College Smash Esports Open Discord. Um, so it will not be the Discord that you find from the exclamation mark Discord channel here. Uh, that exclamation mark Discord is, or for the command and chat, that exclamation mark Discord there is for. Um... I'll just put that in as a three zero. Even though it shouldn't have been all the way through there. Uh, do we have another match that just got announced? We might have. Um, no, we haven't. Okay. Well, we're just waiting on uh, John the Man, OD1 Kenobi. That should be finishing up pretty soon, I would think. Hopefully. Anyway. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, right. I was, uh, going and, uh, getting the prediction outcome in there. Alright. WTKA was bet on by 100% of people. And 100% of people were correct. People are starting to hear about the kids that, well, about the the person who's good with kids, I guess. The link I have to serve. Uh, at this point with the tournament, getting underway there's not a ton of a reason to be in there um unless we we decide to run a, another tournament out of the same discord channel but usually we uh shut down each server and only use them on a tournament by tournament basis um reason being we the organizers hit our limit for the number of servers that we're allowed to be in you're only allowed to be in a hundred at a time um, we hit that limit constantly, and so we need to be, you know, steadily deleting and re-entering new discords all the time. So, um, that means we can't be in there to monitor them. You know, there's, it's not like we're going to burden school staff with doing that when they don't even know what discord is half the time. So, um, we just shut them down and open new ones every time we do a new event. Um, so next time, uh, if, if you, you know, enter another one of these events, um, make sure that uh, you can get into that Discord. That is a requirement for being a part of the tournament. Uh, and if you have any issues with that, make sure to email someone. Um, someone on the Bravest end could definitely help you out with that and get you in. 
Uh, one thing I want to plug really quickly, uh, we've done it once before, but that was right at the beginning of the tournament, uh, are these two straw pulls right here. The first one is for which days work best for you to have virtual esports opens. The second one is to figure out which game we want to play on the next one. Um, the next one's going to be uh, a game of your choice, basically. Uh, the school's going to take a lot of input from you guys, which ones you want to run. Uh, the, the games that we put on there on the straw poll are games that you guys suggested, the ones that you nominated in the, uh, the registration field that asked which games would you like. So that's all of those games that we just threw them all in there vote on them you know have at it the, the democratic process go nuts don't try not to hurt each other too much um and the uh it, there's an other category so that if there's anything that you forgot about or you just missed that part of the registration or you know some some mess like that um you, you just you just couldn't get your act together as a human being you know it's all good we've all been there um then just let us know which game it is that you would prefer on there and we will also take that into consideration. Alrighty. So next set on stream, we're going to have Clever Name versus John the Man. Uh, WTKA, we, we love you very much. Uh, goodbye. This lobby ain't big enough for the four of us. It's only big enough for the three of us. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah, I hope it works out for you too, uh, Send Fizzy. And again, if you ever have any trouble with that, um, there should be an email address that you can, you know, message back uh, when you get the confirmation uh, that you've registered for the event and everything. We we do have we do have uh, tech support. Uh, tech support. I, I'm putting that in air quotes because. Uh, it's really just, you know, sending you a Discord link, but makes me feel fancy, okay? Just let me have this. All right. Next up, this is now winner's round two. This is John the Man versus Clever Name. Last one was winner's round two as well, but well, I, I didn't go and change it, you know? Uh, winners round two, aka winners semifinals. Um, the hmm. challenge we'll call it uh, not semifinals. We'll call winners finals semifinals because challenge is silly. Um, but this is winners semis, so losers guaranteed fifth. Need to get this match underway so that we can get the rest of the losers bracket going. Um, loser of this will drop down to play against Epsilon. Winner will go up against ya boy, WTKA. And so, ladies and gentlemen, kids and squids, crocodiles and other assorted fairy tale creatures of the chat, I ask you, who you got? All right, I'm tote saying John got this. It's gonna clutch up. And send fizzy if for some reason uh, there isn't some kind of support email you can find. You can also try and go back through the school. Um, so like student activities whoever it is that uh, booked with us, um, they should be able to contact us and uh, we can get an answer to you, you know, relay it through them. Um, so that's also an option. Of course, uh, if you want, I guess, huh. uh, if you want to go and uh, find us in our community discord, that is also an option. Uh, I'm in there, I believe, as Coach Jeff. I think that's, 
Well, I put my tag in. Oh, no, I'm just stratagem in there as well. Um, so you can go in there and find one of us. Like, literally just ask me. DM me. Find me in the Discord. Um, that would also be an option for you to troubleshoot this, now that I'm thinking about it. A little bit of a workaround, but hey, it'll work out. I got you. Uh, commentators in Inkling main. Sort of. Sort of. Uh, in this game, I'm a Palu main, actually. Uh, but the reason I have the Inkling there is that I am a competitive Splatoon player. Um, I play for the West Broadway Grillers for Division 3. And if I've got any kids or squids out there, hit me up. Uh, we have a, a Splatoon stream every Tuesday. Shameless plug. Uh, we do YouTube videos, too. <clears throat> anyway, anyway, back to Smash. <clears throat> Got John the Man. John the Man coming in with the King K rule. You think that's the actual character? Yes, that is the actual character. It's always a toss-up. You'd think, you know, that's the character that they're putting in there, right? But uh, half the time it's wrong, as you, as evidenced by me. <laughs> I am not an Inkling main in this game. All right. Do we have a random... Do we just have a question mark in here someplace? No, we don't. I'm actually going to have to switch the characters around manually every game. Lane. Clever name, the random main. Just picking random and actually uh, winning their round one. So, or no, actually, I think they got a buy into round two. Yeah, they got a buy, so. As of yet, untested. However, holding their own pretty decently so far. Seem to know the character and also how to use the character's copy abilities. I think that's maybe even more impressive. <laughs> it's one, one thing to know the character, you know, but it's another thing to know all of the different abilities that you get for that character from all the other characters. It's not even enough to know the moves that those characters have, you know? It's not enough to know their all of their neutral Bs, because Kirby's is always going to have, like, slightly different properties, you know? Like... Oh god, I, I remember back in the day playing Melee, and whenever Kirby would get Falco lasers, it was just over, because he can short hop double laser. <laughs> short hop double laser with lasers that stun. It was like... The character was bad, but it was the single most busted projectile in the game. <laughs> it was really funny. He probably rose, like, several spots on the tier list whenever he got that cop ability, you know? And, like, it plays completely differently from Falco's lasers in that instance. Same thing here, I'm sure. Uh, you know, the, the move has very similar properties, but Kirby's lower to the ground here than King K. Rool is. He's shorter. So that cannonball isn't actually going to hit in exactly the same place. Um, so you got to kind of learn the move all over again. Also, can we talk about how... Yeah, you can't suck up the other guy's blunderbuss in or the other guy's cannonball in your blunderbuss. Can we talk about how that cannonball it doesn't make any sense that's coming out of a gun that that thin, that skinny? Like he should be holding an entire cannon. And I'm sure he could. Like look look at the guy, he's huge. But like is this skinny little thing? Like, that's gonna shoot like that's gonna shoot ammo that's smaller than a quarter at best. It doesn't even fit it like a like a 50 cal or something. I don't know. I don't know. Give it, giving him a little bit of a little bit of license there, a little bit of artistic license. Yeah. On it. What? <laughs> I thought he was gonna make it, and so when they both went down, I was I was flabbergasted. All right, John the man is the man of the hour, or at least the the five minutes or so. We got another five minutes. I don't know. It might yet not be the man of the hour. Because Clever Name might get a character that he's, he's better at on the next roll. <laughs> this is this is all just RNG, man. Ready? I, I also hope someone plays Pyra and Mithra. I'm eager to see how those, those characters fare in uh, competitive play. You tend not to see them, like, it's interesting, like, at a lot of the, like, major tournaments, if there's been a patch recently, 
uh, they'll play on old patch or something like that you know to make sure that someone doesn't find something broken in the characters and just abuse it the whole tournament but more often than not in in our events i've found that uh picking the new character tends to actually be a detriment to them um because they're less familiar with their own character you know um all you really have to figure out are like a few key moves about that character and what their their combo weight is to be able to play against them most of the time i don't know like hero you kind of have to learn a bunch of stuff <laughs> like there, there are exceptions to that rule but for the most part i feel like you know anime sword character you figure out which moves you got to look out for you figure out where the projectile ranges are you know you um, you get hit by a, a couple dumb things and then you kind of know what you gotta do. Um, but learning to play Pyra and Mithra, I feel like that's gonna be a challenge for another couple weeks, month or so before people really start getting it down and using them effectively. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we just don't see any of them at all, if people are gonna go, uh, gonna go for their mains, gonna go for their stronger, their stronger picks, the ones that are more practiced. Mithra is very fast. I, I tried her out last night, actually. Um, I was messing around on uh, Quick Play. And uh, <sighs> she's really fast, which is hard for me to do anything with on Wi-Fi. <laughs> like, if, if this were LAN conditions, I feel like she would be a much stronger choice for me. But I was actually having more success with Pyra on Wi-Fi, just because... You're already playing more predictively with a slower character anyway, so it just works out a little bit better for me in those conditions. Uh, also, her projectile is definitely s something to, to pay attention to. Um, I think it's really cool how it's balanced that the sword has to come back to her before she can do anything else. Um, so you can't, like, throw it out there and then run and chase the projectile and do something else off it. it. It only gives you that one single set of option coverage. So I don't think it's actually like that busted or anything, but being able to put it over the ledge is really annoying. Yeah, odd character, but uh, like definitely new. I think they're fresh, which is insane to say because they are anime sword character number 17 and a half. Um, but I like, uh, the dash move, actually, that, that, uh, Mithra gets. It feels like, um, it's kind of like a, a Fox or Falco dash. Um, bigger hitbox, though, and, you know, something you have to respect a little bit more, I think. And she can still get hit out of it. It happened to me a couple times. Oh my goodness, I don't... What is going on? Nobody knows. Run around the RNG just goes. The, the, I, I messed it up already, but you know what? Three, we got random two, on both sides. Go. It's Link versus Meta Knight. So, clever name, of course, on the Link. Going to be trying to play the projectile game. Um, and try and sit back, throw things, shoot things, all that good stuff. And has so far been uh, coming out on top in this matchup. Um, John the Man looking like he's having a little bit of trouble making it work with the Meta Knight. So, based on how this first stock has gone, wouldn't be surprised to see a game three. Um, but we'll see what John the Man can do, you know. You pick random, you take a second to acclimate to the character, remember what your, your approach options are. Um, figure out what you gotta respect on the other character. So, we'll see if this switches up. But clever name out to a really good start. Ooh. Got the side B coming out from John the Man. Just charges a smash attack all the way up and sends Link all the way off the stage. Oh. I honestly probably wouldn't have challenged that, <laughs> but John the Man knew better than I did. Able to take that out with the down B there. 
especially not knowing the character too well, it's like, well, uh, maybe this trades, I don't know. Well, let's just throw it out there anyway. <laughs> Big ol' smash attack that he's about to eat. Ooh, the final hit doesn't connect, so John the Man actually able to get Clever Name off stage. And just completely whiffs on the down B. Uh, up B, unfortunately, going to hit into the boomerang, so not going to send him too far off stage. Actually, uh, making it a little bit more difficult to edge guard John the Man there. John with the tornado. The bane of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. And Clever Name is now down a stock. So John the Man has been finding his footing. I almost commentated cursed him. Apologies to Clever Name. I try to use my powers for good and not for evil, but it never happens. Never once in my life. Going for that down air, and I think John the Man has caught on. And he's really efficient for these KO options right now. That up, up smash almost got him, and the up e, I like the idea, but did not read John the Man uh, on his air drift very well on the way down. So John the Man is going to get out, going to get a little bit more damage tacked on. Not a ton. 41 is still very winnable, and that smash attack will definitely finish off the stock here. Let's see what they can do. Clever Name needs this one to stay in the winner's bracket, and uh, that's not a great start. Having to upbeat a stage like that, they're just going to get forward smashed off again and again. Uh, really needs to go to ledge or save the up B or something. Get down a little bit more safely. So, so far, this last stock has been all John the Man. But Clever Name is, you know, throwing out all of the right moves to spam if you're going to spam something. It's the down air. It goes for dash attack. Ooh, wow. I, I honestly think John the Man got a little bit lucky with the spacing there. I don't think he knew, yeah, I'm going to hit him in between first and second hit of forward smash. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe John the Man is genius. But what I do know about John the Man is that he's advancing here to winner's finals versus WTKA. Congrats to all of you that bet on John the Man. You guys are making bank. And all the rest of you, eh, sorry. All right. So we're going to kick Clever Name out of here because John the Man is going to be sticking around to play against WTKA in Winner's Finals on stream. This one's a best of five, folks. Best of five. And we, <laughs> Oslis, what are you, what are you doing, posting Fortnite in the chat here? What, what the? Oh wait, are you posting? Uh, what in the world is Nightbot doing? Nightbot, hello. Are you okay, Nightbot? You, you need someone to talk to, Nightbot. You got, you got something going on. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very confused about why that just happened. Uh, those are not the, uh... <laughs> those are not the links to the challenge bracket that we're playing in, because, uh, those are PS4 and Xbox links, and, uh, we play on the Switch, so... We'll figure out what's going on with that, but in the meantime, I got a question. Who you got? Uh, so for the bracket, uh, you can go into announcements and it was posted there. Uh, I will give you the link manually right here. Fortnite 1v1 me, bro. You'd win. I'm trash at that game. Abs I'm doggy doo-doo. I play it. You know, I, got I keep current on it, but... Man, I play on Switch. <laughs> I, I don't use a mouse. 
I, I was like, you know, they've got motion controls, and I play Splatoon. Like, this might actually be a match made in heaven. Like, I might actually be able to use this better than most humans. Uh, but unfortunately, the motion control sensitivity in that game is very, very low. Um, I can't be anywhere near as fast on my snaps as I can in Splatoon. So that messes me up. Um, that makes it so that it's a lot harder to aim. Um, and it's, it's like, annoyingly not analog, too. Um, you'll, you'll, like, be sniping, and you'll try and turn just the tiniest bit, and it won't go. And you'll turn just a little bit more. It still won't go. It turns a little bit more, and then it jumps past the guy. Like, you can actually be far enough away that there are holes in your effective range using a sniper rifle. It's really, really dumb. So... Yeah, I, I committed pretty hard to learning a control scheme that doesn't work. <laughs> For me! <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yes. Yes, I am a, a Splatoon player. Uh, I actually do a bunch of uh, instructional content. Um, it's a series on how to get out of different ranks in Splatoon. Um, so if you're, you know, in C rank... I actually smurfed through C rank and uh, took notes on the matches and was like, all right, here are the mistakes people are making in C rank. Here are the mistakes people are making in B rank. You know, here's how to get better. Here's how to stop doing these things and move on to the next one. Um, so I've been making a bunch of those videos on YouTube, stuff like that. I'm also a caster. Uh, I commentated at Genesis. Um, I've commentated a bunch of uh, Splatoon amateur circuit events. Um, Turf Be Told, which is a Turf War tournament. So, done a bunch of that. And I've also uh, just been a competitive player with West Broadway Grillers for the last couple of years, which has been a lot of fun. Love doing that stuff. But, uh, right now we're talking about Smash. So that's where we're at. Only have 1k hours? Okay, look. <laughs> 1k is definitely all you need to get into X rank. But, uh... I think it says something about the game that uh, only 1k hours is a thing people talk about. It's very deep, and it's also got a, a really high learning curve, you know? It's not like you can't have fun going in at the very base level, you know, at the beginner level, but, like, you have a really long way up to go as well, um, which I think is really cool. Very fulfilling game to get into. Very much like Smash, you know, and... I won't discount Smash either. I was a, a melee player competitively for... God, uh, it's coming up on 15 years? 2006? Yeah, coming up on 15 years. Um, so... I've had my uh, my fair share of those kinds of tournaments and, and casting and TOing and all that good stuff. Commentating is a lot of fun if you like saying words, if you're the kind of person who likes that. You know, some people don't like attention being on them. And uh, for those people, it probably is not that fun. But I, I am not one of those people. I am a, uh, a teacher, for one thing. I was a, an English teacher for a while. So, needless to say, uh, talking to groups of people is a thing that I have done a lot of. And I enjoy it very much. I like my mouth words. Now it would be nice if I could figure out why it keeps posting the, uh, the bracket. Oh, okay, there, that's a bracket command, okay. I don't know why I didn't see QuackTM putting exclamation mark bracket in there. The bracket Ready? command didn't get updated when we got the new one. Oh, here comes the match. So now we test my APM and fixing Nightbot. Alright, hopefully this will be correct now. Did I mistype that? No, I didn't. Cool. And that should be accurate. Perfect. Alright, we got John the Man versus WTKA. John the Man on the traditional K rule. The K rule of legends. K rule that has been since the 
dawn of John the Man. And we're not winners round two, we're in winners finals. The bets are already out there. Got some people on WTKA, got some people on John the Man. First stock going to WTKA here. Battle of two heavies. Um, so honestly, the, the stocks going down that early. That's a more significant lead for uh, WTKA than it would be in other matchups, I think. Because, you know, I could easily see this uh, King DDD living to 170 or further. And in that time, you know, he's got a whole bunch of opportunities to tack extra damage onto John the Man. Uh, I taught English. Uh, middle, middle school English, for the most part. I uh, was in a high school classroom at one point, too. Ooh, big old dunk. Ooh, putting him straight down. That's... Oh, he's going for it again. He wants it. He, he got a taste of that sweet dopamine and wants to do it all over again. Gets countered, though. Oh, my goodness. That belly hits back hard. Bunch of nares coming out from John the Man. WTKA not falling for the counter a second time. Up airs him. Not going to KO at that percentage. Uh, but that is one of DDD's KO threats, as we saw earlier on. Main turf. <laughs> your character. Ooh! Oh no! J just no. I believe that might have. It might have actually pressed up B. I believe that uh, K. Rule still dips a little bit down before he starts getting any height out of the, the upbeat. He probably dipped down below the blast zone, so a little bit of a recovery error there from John the Man. Definitely had the upbeat, you know, he, he could have made it back from that. Um, probably just timed it a little bit poorly. It might, might have been the Wi-Fi as well, you know, latency does affect timings on uh, specific things like that, so maybe that's what went down there. Unfortunate. But uh, WTKA taking game one here. This is a best of five, remember? So he's not as out of it as he would be in a best of three right now. Just poggers. Pog champ. Snoop poggy pog. So yeah, if you're ever interested in getting into... Uh, competitive Splatoon, they're going to play all the ranked modes much more than they're going to play turf. There are a few turf tournaments, uh, but most of them have been run by Nintendo. And then the other like four of them uh, have actually been run by me and some, some other people that uh, were interested in getting something like that going. <laughs> like, I, it, I'm pretty sure there's actually a single digit number of uh, turf war tournaments that have uh, been run at a competitive level in the last couple years. So I'm, I'm hmm. Last time, the only character switch we saw, I think, from John the Man was going random in response to a uh, clever name. I think we we might see him just kind of hang on here with the K rule. Join the tournament because he can't handle stress. <laughs> Understandable. Like, I really honestly, I do not look down on people who just play the games casually. Um... I think it's a, it's a specific personality type that gravitates towards competitive play. It's uh, it also tends to be someone who's just played the game for longer and his the, the novelty has kind of worn off on uh, playing it on a casual level. Because like, you you can only get killed by a Raffalos that many times before you're just like, ah, all right, let's let's just let's just turn that item off. <laughs> let's just let's just not have to put up with that, please. You know, I, I think that the. If you're enjoying the game more, playing it on a casual level, more power to you. You know, just just play the game the way you enjoy it. Don't feel like you're you're compelled, like you're not a serious gamer, as if you'd want to be. Uh, if you don't play the game on a competitive level. But uh, I think if you do want to play on a on a competitive level, like there's a lot of depth. There's a lot of uh, kind of personal improvement that you can make. You know. 
Um, it teaches you more than other things have in my life, uh, how to recognize thought habits that are holding you back, you know, how to recognize a mindset that isn't what's conducive to the, the best performance that you can possibly give. Um, our founder, Scott Novus, likes to say that uh, esports competition in general are really good for helping you be your best when your best is most needed. Um, I really like that phrasing of it. Pull the winner aside, be easier instead of stressing out due to publicity and such. Ah, okay, so you're, you're looking for a thug finals. <laughs> you're looking to just beat up on the winner and be like, yeah, I'm the best, guys. Don't worry about it. I see how it is. Ready? All right, so we've got a Bowser now coming out from John the Man. He is a, a somewhat higher tier option. Uh, Bowser's got some stuff. Three. Seen a number of Bowsers before, um, especially at a competitive level. Uh, people tend to gravitate toward that character, I think. It, 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 this is just, you know, speculative. This is just based on my own empirical data, which might not be enough to really be relevant statistically, but I feel like there are more Bowser mains out there than a lot of other characters. I feel like it's a pretty popular at, at a competitive level. Uh, to answer Ocelis's, uh, I'm trying to say Ocelot, Ocelis's question in chat, uh, I am a T-Tech fan. Um, well, okay, K-Shot main these days, but I've been playing T-Tech for longer than anything else. <laughs> unoriginal is definitely being unoriginal right now. That's a ninja tweet. I know that ninja tweet. <laughs> Uh, I hope he got memed on pretty hard for that, because it's like... I think that's just, like, objectively wrong, most of what he's saying there. I get where he's coming from, that there are a lot of people who say it's just a game that are saying it for the wrong reasons, but, like... If you're trying to get rich and famous playing esports, you better be the very best at, at what you do. And you'd better also be a good business person. You'd better be able to negotiate sponsorships that aren't predatory. Because there are a lot of those out there in the esports space. A lot of people who are just going to say, Hey, you're sponsored now. Give us free advertising. And not really pay for anything. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like... Uh, trying to make it big in the world... Really not doing it with a, vi with a video game. There, there are probably some other routes that you're going to take instead. Um, and that might change. I'd love for that to change. I think there, there are some really good opportunities um, that we haven't really considered beyond just being a top-level player. But uh, the way that Ninja pursues things is very particular. And it works very well for him. It's not going to work well for everybody. And I think that uh, putting that advice out there on, on Twitter, you know, a public platform where 12-year-olds are going to be reading it, I, I think they're getting a pretty skewed perspective on the way that they should approach video games in general. I don't know. Maybe the point was just to say something controversial and uh, get a bunch of publicity for that. Who knows? Going back to the game after waxing poetic about all sorts of things that are not Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We've got a pretty even game here. John the Man actually taking that stock against the WTKA. Don't call it a comeback yet, but uh, maybe call it a comeback. Ooh. I only very recently learned that that phrase, uh, don't call it a comeback, actually comes from uh, LL Cool J. I heard the song, I was like, wait, that's what that's from! Oh, I get it! <laughs> it's, it's just something that, like, commentators have been saying for probably, like, a decade now that I've been listening to. I never knew. 
it's like nice back air or wombo combo, you know? Sometimes people just don't know where it comes from. I want to be the very best. No one ever was. I, I always wince a little bit when someone allows themselves to take that. What? Excuse me. What just happened? <laughs> what was that trade? It looked like Bowser was the only one getting hit in the animation, but apparently he traded with like a forward air or something and actually won the match. <laughs> oh, that was so weird. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Maybe like... Because maybe I was just looking at Bowser's character model and King DDD was actually also flinching and I missed that. But it looked to me like DDD was just connecting with a down air. And then DDD flies off and dies. I, I, someone clip that so I can go back and see what happened there. I'm curious. So here we are, one to one. Winners finals is not a blowout. WTKA had their way with the uh, winners bracket so far, but they have just been stopped for the first time, or at least hit hit, hit a speed bump, a little a little roadblock. See how they navigate around it. Time you out for spamming links. You didn't spam a link, you posted it like once. That's that's sus. Hold on. Nightbot, Nightbot, we're gonna have a talk here. Your your spam protection hit the bugs. I don't know why it says spamming links. It literally just blocks you for sending any links. So sorry about that, John the man. Um, I will, I, I'm able to see it though. So using my, my privilege, I will elevate your voice. Using my sword, my star. I shall support you. I can see why Unoriginal is named Unoriginal now. It's making a lot of sense as time goes on. Okay, that's a that's an adorable little B emote though. I would protect that little guy with my life. That's the kind of bee that you see it in your house and you don't you don't kill it, you don't swat it with a fly swatter. You 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 take it out the front door and put it next to the flower that it wants to kind of nom on. You make sure that it's happy and that it has everything it needs in life. Yeah, Nightbot really be wildin' today. I hate to see it. Tragic. Yes, this is our, our favorite hobby. <laughs> B. I said B. <laughs> now you gotta play the whole entire B movie. Or what? what is it? I think it's like the entire B movie, but every time they say the word B, it plays uh, the Nutshack theme. Ready? Shout out to Silva Gunner, the legend. Or is it Gilva Sunner? I think Gilva Sunner is the one that actually posts the real things, and then Silva Gunner is the parody account. Three, 
Either way, absolute legend of the internet. You like jazz? Yes, it's a fantastic Scrabble word. One of the best ways to get rid of uh, J's and Z's. Alright. So let's see if uh, WTKA can adapt to this Bowser. Um, things have uh, not gone his way in the last match. But looks like he's got a sizable percentage lead at this point. This is counter pick against the Bowser, the uh, Smashville here. Kind of just sitting under that uh, middle platform there. I think one of the biggest tragedies of this entire game is the fact that the Smashville platform doesn't move when hazards are turned off. Like, I think the, the greatest gift that Brawl gave to Smash was Smashville, and they took away the thing that made Smashville Smashville. Uh, I guess Steve just decided to uh, not throw out an uppy there. Maybe he was so worried about the down air that... Oh my goodness. How are you giving me a chance to cast the stock he just lost? WTKA putting him off the level and just forward airing him all the way. What a crazy low percentage KO. Legit, I only play Words with Friends, and it's just because my mom wants to play it with me. <laughs> it's a Skinner box and a half. Jesus. It'll have you playing with all these bots that it makes you think are humans. And then all these bots that it classifies as bots. Give you ads every move. Like, ugh. Very mobile game, and I don't like it. But anyway, DDD getting in with a forward tilt, throwing out a Gordo. Nice grab. Got him off the stage here. Oh, so I think the air dodge that John the Man did earlier was to try and get away from that down air that DDD's been throwing out. Yeah, see, that's why I'm so scared about him shielding those. Shield is an M and M. And he just goes down. WTKA with fantastic edge guard pressure there. Alright. It is worth noting, I have to say, after getting absolutely demolished on the first two stocks there in like 15 seconds time, John the Man brought it back to last stock and made it competitive. Um, if you can just kind of dodge that happening again... Um, I think this is definitely a match. You know, this could definitely go to a game five here. Let's take a quick look here. So we got 97% of the points on John the Man here, but we got one person who put in 10 little points for WTKA. Right now, it's WTKA that is actually in the lead in the set, two to one. So we'll see if John the Man can turn it around. I mean, I absolutely believe that it can happen. Take a quick look at the bracket here, see what else is going on on the bottom side, on the, the loser side bracket. So, oh, that's awesome. We're all caught up in loser side. That never happens. Um, oh, so we had a DQ round one, or round one of losers. That probably helped things out a little bit. But, uh, so Epsilon, who we saw round one versus WTKA, uh, has made it all the way up into losers finals here. They will play the loser of this match. John the Man going Karata play? Excuse me? I am surprised, given how well the, uh... Bowser's been working up until this point. And, uh, not going too hot right now. This is not a situation where I expected him to want to switch characters. Oof. I'm trying 
to work things out, trying to get in there. There's not that much of a, a punish game from Piranha Plant. So very much a character that you uh, want to be using a lot of spike balls and kind of zoning with. That jump spike ball approach is something you got to respect a lot. Great forward smash there. Looks like he's finding his footing a little bit. There's the down there. Not going to find it. Not quite got the timing or the spacing for it. You can see the idea for sure. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Om nom nom. A big bite out of crime there. How does it feel to be the main character? Um. Well, the thing is, characters are really just a, a product of fiction. So, who can really say what it is like to be to be this imaginary figment of somebody else's mind. Sounds like a, a horrifying thing to be self-aware about. I guess you could probably come to terms with it, but... It'd probably be like what, what it feels like to learn that we're all living in a simulation, you know? If you're familiar with simulation theory. Ooh! Dun dun! And WTKA putting the plant away. Did not water it, did not fertilize it. Just threw it out. Nom nom nom. Actually getting a little peckish myself. It's unfortunate, but happens. So WTKA is your winner here, so looks like uh, Epsilon actually put that bet down. So congrats to them for being rewarded like 30-fold or something, the points that were bet here. So that'll be it for winner's finals. Now we're up with loser's finals. So John the Man is actually just staying right on here. This is interesting, you know, usually with uh, any size double elimination bracket, the loser's side is going to be slower than the winner's side, and you're going to get a little bit of a break to kind of chill out, cool down, you know, get your head back in the game in between sets if you, you lost out of winner's finals. But John the Man's kind of just getting thrown right back into it. Um, so we'll see uh, how this is going to work up against Epsilon. Uh, we are going to need uh, WTKA to dip out of here so that we have room in the lobby. So, bye bye Apologies, bump the mic there. So, Epsilon, get get your butt in here. Get it, get in here. Get, come on, get, come on, get. All right. Ladies and gentlemen and all others of the chat, I ask you, who you got? It is Loser Finals, best of five. We are between John the Man and Epsilon. I like to see John the Man acknowledging his opponent here. Um, the, the DD was solid in his words. It's always good to, you know, give your opponent credit where that credit was due. Because um, uh, getting into a place where you're blaming losses on just, you know, silly mistakes you make or something like that, um, you know, basically discrediting your opponent for outplaying you. Sometimes that can make you miss things that 
went wrong in the set that you can improve that you can learn from so i think that's a really you know solid thing to be saying out here see what john the man can put together versus the new opponent here got epsilon in here i'm really curious to see what uh, characters we're trying to pull okay okay i see i see my goodness have we not updated the character icon oh, we don't actually have a sephiroth icon um here Three, uh, two, one, go. basically the same no with, uh, with anime sword people right right yeah that's that's fair final fantasy chant fans in the chat out to murder me out to put me in the ground Ooh, that's some uh, chunky lag right there. Oh, goodness. One winged angel, but every time they go, da -da 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 -da. it just pauses for five seconds. So Sephiroth versus Hero. Whoa, what a freeze frame. That actually looks super cool. Shout out to the Smash animation team, you know. They are they really are some of the best in the business. It's a pity but the, the business side of things, Nintendo did not provide a better internet connection with the the product. But well we make do with what we got. It's still a great game. Ooh. Okay, wins it with the dash attack. Trying to throw out a fireball. Pulls out way too early, but is able to cover with the... I think it's an up smash. I don't remember his uh, smash attacks from his tilts just yet. I haven't seen quite enough of the characters. Gets that forward tilt. That forward tilt is nutty. That forward tilt is like bonkers it's like like crazy cats like out of his mind it's like loony gets the grab up throw not going to hit the tilt there oh and just gets frozen able to <laughs> recover still Hits at the end of the up B there. Runs in, and I think an input got eaten there. I have to imagine that's what happened there. A Wi-Fi meter or bar. Surrounding the amount of times the players in arenas. So you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's it can be hard to tell except by, you know, a combination of players, combination of matches whose internet is actually the one causing the problems. Uh, I, for one, use the Ethernet adapter. Thank you very much. And have more than sufficient bandwidth. So I am uh, completely blameless for all things involved here. No, but uh, it, it is a neat feature that uh, they can kick somebody out but keep the match going to try and decrease latency for the two that are actually playing. That is a thing that happens sometimes in our tournaments where somebody will uh, have a rougher connection and the spectator actually gets kicked from the lobby so that uh, the game itself isn't as, effect as affected by it. Unfortunate recovery error there from Epsilon. It, it's really been his game so far. It's been a pretty significant lead, but uh, now he's going to have to kind of make that lead back, which I think he is showing he can definitely do. That almost that almost connected. I'm really surprised that it didn't, being, being frank. Well, that didn't do anything. Uh, no metal slash on Sephiroth, so he kind of just has to, like, sit there and wait. 
You know, there might be a timing for where the uh, metal part of it will wear off. But uh, you're definitely not getting an advantage by doing that. Absalon taking game one here with the Sephiroth. The entire joy of Wi-Fi. Oh my god, you guys have Stockholm Syndrome now. You're so used to the worst connection in fighting games <laughs> that you just learned to love it. Dragon Knight Scotty saying, you ate that blast entirely because of lag. So I'm assuming that's uh, Epsilon. Dragon Knight Scar Scotty Karma. Those are a lot of words. Literally just walked into it. Show the man like lag fun. <laughs> Ready? Who's Frank? Oh, I said to be Frank, didn't I? That's what you guys are talking about. I've been spending the last like two minutes trying to figure out who the heck Frank is. Three, I hate all of you. Alright, we got Ganondorf out now. Different King of Evil. I don't know, is Sephiroth really a king? It's more of like a... It's more of like an edge lord than a true king. Lord of the edge. I'm not talking about edge guarding necessarily, although... Alrighty, John the Man taking advantage of the uh, stock advantage to just even out the percentages there by doing a suicide KO. Epsilon needs to get a lot out of this right now. Otherwise, uh, he's not in great shape. 60% already. John the Man, a really great spot. Like, that was a very strategically useful... No! He did not! He did not just hit him with that. I... Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Hmm... Ah, uh, uh. also I uh, I put the, the the wrong character with the player. That was that was John the man who got that. So we're one to one, and everything is completely mixed up. But nevertheless, well, let's let's go and assume that he stays Gandorf because holy sweet mother, a turtle. Mystic Scott. Ooh, I like that. That's cool. <laughs> there we go. Uh, every tournament, we uh, we grab a couple of clips from the stream just to you know show the the school that we're running stuff for what, what some of the highlights were of the event. And uh, we've already sent off that uh, up till two frame. It's it's already going. It's already you know surfing the interwebs towards your school. I'm gonna remember that one. 
Now, what I also need to remember, though, uh, is to switch it. Richter now. These guys have played three different characters in every single match so far. I think that's the thing that happened. Um, both very zoning-based characters. Um, I'm actually curious to see which one of them uh, is going to be more dominant on stage, which one's forcing the other one to play around him. Great get-off-me option there from Snake. Not able to punish, even though he actually gets the read on the roll. Yes, for Epsilon. The ledge trap here is brutal for Richter. There's just so, so many... Uh, so many things he can do to cover the options Snake's going to want to use here. you got to really know the character to know the holes in it. Know the way out. Because um, a lot of the time it's like you'll get hit worse if you try to avoid damage. You know, you've got to pick what you get hit by in some of these cases uh, strategically. Area respectively, or respectfully, that is. And able to get down. So far, Epsilon's had some pretty good answers to the uh, stage control options that Richard has. Been able to just get that jab combo out in a lot of situations here. Piling on the damage with his own little ledge trap here, just literally spamming up Smash. Oh, and he actually mixes it up. That was so slick. Did you see what he did there? He was sitting in the explosion of the up Smash so that it was basically a smoke screen. You couldn't see after he spams, he conditions him by spamming the up Smash. You know, you think he's going to do an up Smash again. Then he starts charging out a Smash attack as soon as the up Smash lands. But the up smash covers up the fact that it's actually a forward smash he's charging now. I, it took me so long to explain it that he already won the game. But, like, that was sick. That was actually super cool. I feel like that's that's something he's practiced. I feel like that's something that it, they're actually pulling out, uh, knowing that that's what they're doing. This has been a really cool set to watch. And I have no idea what's going on in their heads about their character selection, because it's just all over the place. Snake with the cape. Flies in riding a drake. He's uh, uh, flying over a lake. It's, it's very, very picturesque. I, I don't know. I got nothing. All right, so let's see where we're off to next. And who we're off to next? My goodness, what these guys are! I don't understand. Are they are they playing random? But they're like choosing these characters. Their character pools just go that deep. We've got a uh, doo doo dee dude versus a Donkey Kong. Bars, don't bars that. That was terrible. <laughs> that was like... That was like elementary school trying to write, write a poem. Oh, goodness. Alright. So, Epsilon here on the Donkey Kong. Coming out largely with the advantage here. Literally 
probably the greatest challenge that Sans has faced thus far as a human child, so a gorilla is a bit of a step up. Let's see if he can handle it. Off. Oh my goodness. Sans firing out some grenades. Uh, those are canonical, I promise. You uh, just haven't uh, haven't played through the uh, the genocide plus route yet. Yeah, that's what it is. Definitely. <laughs> So rough to watch. It's like, oh man. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And this is definitely affecting gameplay. Like, you know that this is causing the game to eat inputs, it's messing up the timing on everything. This is really the Wi Fi experience. Impressively, I was about to say impressively, John the Man has not been KO'd yet, and of course, right at that moment, I just opened my frickin' mouth, you know? I don't mean to bring these curses down upon the, upon the world, but sometimes I just do. Ghost of Ford Smash, not gonna get it, gets, get up attack from ledge. Curse indeed. Oh. Great counterplay there. And I like how Epsilon is choosing an option there that's simple enough that even the lag isn't going to mess it up. Oh, he went for the down air and is not going to make it back from that. So huge advantage now all of a sudden to Epsilon. John the Man's tournament life at stake on this match and he's got to make a three stock to one comeback with the skeleton. 15 FPS, I wish. This is probably worse than that. My word, how long does this punch take to connect? Yeah, all right. It's going to kick me out, hopefully. Hopefully, it's not going to disconnect the players here. All right. I, I hope that that helps with the latency. The match is still ongoing. That's what these sparks mean here. Um, sometimes the game will just decide, eh, let's, uh, let's get that third person out of there. See if we can smooth things out for the remaining two. So, unfortunately, we're not going to see how this match goes on. But we will see the result conclusively enough to be able to call the match and uh, see who's advancing to grand finals here. Sparks are really flying. I, I think that's a Pokemon Stadium line, isn't it? Something like that. Well, I'm glad, Ocelus, because we are happy to run these for you. Oh, no. Uh, excuse me? Did we just... John the man? You okay? You okay, buddy? Thanos, cut that... Cut that ish out. Uh... We're gonna need... <laughs> I think you need to see what happened there. So now, yeah, if you see John the Man in the middle of uh, that final game there. Potentially final game. So uh, the TO's call is that if Epsilon agrees, 
y'all can play it back, same characters. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, being the player that DC'd, the, the match would go to Epsilon there. So, it's their call. Okay, Epsilon wants to run it. So we'll get John the Man back in here. You know, same lobby, same password that we've been using so far. Okay, John the Man is saying uh, that he wants to make Epsilon make the room here. That would make some sense. So. All right. So I'm actually going to join their arena. Hopefully the change of host here is going to make it a little bit smoother. Yeah, and the weird thing is, John the Man, you haven't had that issue in all of the other matches we've seen with you on stream. It just hasn't been that bad. I don't know if you're, you're, you're getting throttled. I don't know if it was actually an issue on someone else's end and you're just the one that got disconnected for it. I don't know what's up with that. Glad you like it, Ocelus, because uh, it exists because we're terrified of copyright. <laughs> After all of that, that insanity went down with uh, the music industry and Twitch copyrights, um, basically anything that ends up in a Twitch VOD could potentially get copyright struck and you got creators deleting their entire catalogs at the advice from their lawyers like ugh, that that sucks so much um so we're, we're trying to play it extra safe we're not even playing the in-game music because nintendo is especially bad about that that kind of copyright stuff I, I don't know of them pulling specifically like tournament footage from youtube for that reason but uh as a business, we're, we're trying to protect ourselves from that. But uh, on the plus side, uh, th this is a Monster Cat. Uh, Monster Cat has licenses that you can purchase where uh, as long as you have that license and you know the, the account that you're using is tied to that license, um, they will not pursue anything copyright related. You know, you can just kind of get it and be safe having it and uh, play whatever you want from their site. So it's a really good solution for us. All right, I've got the uh, ID and password. I'm just gonna swap over really quick so we don't get sniped. It me. You get to watch me as I uh, type things in with a, a controller here. No arenas found. Let me try that again. Oh, yeah, because I'm a dummy and put in the wrong number. <gasps> it has a number in it. Oh my god, I've narrowed it down exponentially which one it is. Okay, I know we get the password. Hacker man, we're in. Step into the ring. <laughs> and he named it the password. Uh, of course. So much for uh, dodging the snipers. Well, should be fine. I've only got the one more match left to go here. Fingers crossed, everybody. So, 
we should be seeing the uh, same characters here since we're you know replaying a match that was already in progress so we'll see me gunner aka sans versus the donkey kong should be on the same stage as well no surprises just to see if the uh, connection's a little bit nicer Three, two, one, go! this is looking better for the time being it's not great but it's looking playable to some extent Great ledge trap that we got here from the Me Gunner. Ooh. Might have been a little bit of a help from the lag there hitting that forward air for Donkey Kong, but someone's behind, so can't be hurting them. Ooh. Epsilon's jumping at him a lot. I feel like he's recognized that uh, jumping over those projectiles one of the best ways to deal with them. There's not a lot of like ledge trap type stuff you can do. And he just sends it right back at him. Uh, good knowledge, or maybe you just got lucky. I don't know, but maybe he'll try and do that more if he got lucky. It's a good adaptation either way. Good job getting the jab combo out just in time. John the man grabbing the ledge and... Uh, Trying to reestablish some stage control here. Up throw up air. The ding dong combo, as it has been going for some time. I was expecting him to just go in a giant punch off of that. I thought he was gonna do it. It's definitely something that I think that John the Man has to respect right now. Oh, and he's in. Cool. Ooh. Gets in with the back air. Doesn't quite get the uh, forward air. Not going to be able to cover the ledge with that down smash there. Actually gets KO'd with Sansa's recovery move here. It's down smashed off the top. So John the Man down a game in the set here. If he loses this, that's the tournament life. He would get third place for that. Which is definitely respectable, but definitely not where he's going to try and go out here. Epsilon's got him off stage. Charges up the giant punch. Does not get to throw it out just yet. Good down smash there from John the Man. Trying to throw out a smash attack. Catch him on the way up. You never know. Might connect. Not very likely to, but can't hurt to try. Most of the time. Oh, and that's it. No jump. Gets clipped off the stage. And Epsilon okay. takes it three to one. All right, congrats to Epsilon for making grand finals. We're in there. So Epsilon coming from the loser side, of course, going to have to have... Uh, an extra round one here. But that brings up WTKA versus Epsilon. This is a rematch of winner's round one. Um, so way back there, WTKA was able to take it 2-0. But I don't think we've seen Epsilon even play the same characters since. Alright. Uh, I'm una unable to make anybody leave because this isn't my lobby here. 
So... What? Let's see. Oh, uh, wait. I think it was... Was it John the Man who made the lobby? I think it was Epsilon who made the lobby. As long as Epsilon made the lobby, we should be fine. We just need John the Man to dip out and... Uh, for... WTKA to come back in. All right, cool. And the correct lobby information is in there. Um, so if we could just have uh, John the Man step out. I don't know what the lobby cap is here exactly, but if it was set to three like it was before... Uh, we'll need you to not be in here so that we can uh, get Grand Finals played. Send this on Discord all the clips of me. Thanks. Yeah, sure. We could uh, try and put that together. Um, all of the clips will be on this channel. Um, you can probably just sort by last seven days or something and find them pretty easily that way. It's probably the quickest way to get them. Um you know how to do that on Twitch. You just click on the, the name of the streamer while you're watching um, and then go to videos, use the drop down to go to clips. And from there you can, you get the uh, menu, you know, seven days or whatever. Um, any clip that happened in the last seven days, there aren't that many tournaments that are happening on uh, this particular account right now. This is, you know, a secondary account where uh, if we have multiple tournaments on a given day, we'll use this one, but otherwise it all goes on the main channel. So, um, speaking of which, if you want to follow the main channel, um, twitch.tv slash Bravest Esports. You see this one's Bravest Esports 2, that one's Bravest Esports. You see, it makes sense. There's logic in the world sometimes. Sometimes we are rational people. Um, so that's uh, a good place to follow for a lot more content. Um, this one's basically just kind of an overflow stream that we run to uh, in the event that we happen to need it. So... Definitely check that one out if you're interested in more of this kind of thing. But I have got a, a very important question to ask all of y'all. And that question is, who you got? You have two minutes to show me who you got. Hee <laughs> hee, Rick and Morty references. That's how you know I'm smart. I'm of above average intelligence for cracking up here. Oh, memes, memes, memes. Tater tots or fries? Um, depend, depends on the quality of the fries. If they're really good fries, I take them above the tots. If they're your average level fries, I take the tots. I think that's where I'm at on that. Ready? So, like, I think, like, McDonald's fries and above... I'm on board with the fries. Um, I, I have a fairly high opinion of McDonald's fries. I put them in like A tier. Not quite S tier, but A tier for sure. Okay, um, so we've got uh, Anime Sword Boy back out again. They're, they're basically the same character, right? We can just use the, the cloud character icon. That's fine. Need to go and uh, find out where the data miners got the uh, stock icons from. Snag those. Oops. Someone voted against me. I need your points. Very confident. Lime coming out. The, uh, she plays the pink side, though. The pink side, though, is WTK8. Ooh, putting all of the points out there on WTKA. Very confident here. So far proving to not be that bad of a bet. Got a slight advantage here going into game one. Man, we've seen a lot of characters out of Epsilon. I'm very curious to see what he's going to end up settling on. You know, putting his tournament life on. Throwing a bunch of explosions out there. Massive forward smash. Picks up like a third of the stage. like ddd oh there we go well the ddd likes you back wants you to have all of these points right now up a full stock some nice little follow-ups here from the sephiroth he's done some labbing he knows his stuff Ooh, the stolen pull though 
Oh. Gets him down with the uh, the dash attack off the side. Alrighty. WTKA. Looking for that no reset set one grand finals tournament win. I like about the monster cat playlist is that I hear this like over and over it's like the thing about you what Lucario excuse what is going on WTKA on the Lucario actually interesting One, go. and of course they swap sides on me never making my job easy on the production end grumble grumble I say one of the things I like about the Monster Cat playlist is that like it's like my work music, you know. You, you work at a retail spot, you're gonna hear you know the same playlist over and over again, right? Um, and, and it's got that like that old school Pokemon music quality of just never getting old. Like. Yeah, you're never gonna get tired of that. It just always sounds sound like well for Pokemon it sounds kind of like, I wouldn't say quite the same about Monster Cat but it's neat that it has that quality. To it. Ooh, keeps the Aura Sphere, and so WTKA finds himself down a stock actually after uh, taking game one. I, I was that, that was the I think that was the um I think it's like the, the, the first area that you're in. Maybe I'm wrong. So, someone who's a bigger Pokemon, Pokemon nerd than me in the, the chat can, can prove themselves useful, can prove their, their life dedicated to that game to have been worth it just for this one moment. Yeah, Lavender, Lavender Town music is some of the best horror music I've ever heard. A bit off is all. <laughs> yeah, th those like uh, summoners or psychics or whatever they were in uh, the Pokemon Tower who were possessed. Like, it was just a little creepier than uh, like five-year-old me was ready for, you know. It was Pallet Town, knew it. I was never doubting it for a second. Meanwhile, WT WTKA has uh, shown that they haven't doubted themselves for a minute either. They lost that first stock, but since then they have just taken almost all three stocks without losing another one. Really big swing in their favor here. And uh, Epsilon really needs to find this last hit. Oh, but that might actually do it. And WTKA now in perfect position to just sweep grand finals. In order to come back from this, Epsilon needs to win the next three straight and then needs to win another best of five. It's a pretty tall order. We've seen crazy things happen before. Uh, just got to find the right character and the right the right mindset and the right strategy to do it.
Yeah, see, so they did something really tricky with the uh, the harmony, and I think there's there are actually like over there's overtone stuff to what they're doing in uh, Lavender Town. It might just be a music like a like a, a harmony thing specifically, but I thought I heard that there was some kind of like uh, over high pitched tone in it or something that causes dissonance. Not sure if that's true or not. So like something hypersonic in it. There, there are a lot of like legends about that that got spread around the schoolyard. So I could totally be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm googling Lavender Town. One of the first thing that, things that comes up there. What in the world are these character choices? One of the first thing that comes up there is Lavender Town music death. Some kind of creepy pasta that had to do with it. It randomed to Mithra. Three, two, uh, okay, wait, wait. An who, who's our anime sword girl that we can? There, there we go. That's Mithra, right? That's totally Mithra. We're actually going Pyra. But uh, all right, so Pyra is the slower of the two. Um, has this projectile, which is really neat and that I like a lot. Uh, but that is also balanced pretty harshly by the sword having to return to her before she can do anything else. Uh, so you really can't follow up with it that well. And I think Mithra is probably the best choice in neutral for the most part. Pyra is like... Switching to Pyra, I feel like it's like switching to Charizard right at the end of a stock so that you've got a whole bunch more uh, KO options. Um, but like Mithra, she's just faster... Um, still has a decent damage output. Not as good, obviously. Uh, has a few nice little follow-ups here and there. I think down tilt... It, I was labbing it out, and it felt like down tilt true comboed into up B, but uh, I haven't really had a chance to confirm that against human players yet. So... She's got some stuff. Um, and some juggles, too. The, the juggles do have... Uh, significant threat potential. However, uh, it's worth noting that uh, you can just get meat out of that side beat. <laughs> this, is, this is a thing that can happen. Um, I feel like Pyra, there is actually an argument for just staying her on Wi-Fi. <laughs> she does hit pretty hard. You know, any aerial right now is probably just going to KO right away. Forward air KOs. Up air KOs, down air KOs. I don't remember back air, but I think it KOs. There it is. See, just like that. He gone. Oh my god. Ocelus here in the chat thirsting over a sword. Oh no, WTKA with a weird recovery error. That's uncharacteristic, to say the least. So that puts Epsilon actually at a slight lead here. After going random and getting the newest character in the game. Switch to Pyra. Interesting call there. I'm wondering what the uh, the thought is behind it. Maybe just having trouble controlling Mithra. I would understand that. I was having a lot of trouble controlling Mithra on Wi-Fi connections. Ooh, that forward smash. So spooky. And oh, he was shielding for such a long time. Forward smashes in the wrong direction. I don't know if it would have hit. But it was pretty slow, but. Definitely not going to hit if you're aiming the wrong way. Yeah, Wi-Fi Pyra... Basically every trick you've ever seen someone use on Wi-Fi is going to work with Pyra on Wi-Fi. Long-lasting projectiles, smash attack reads, whatever the heck that neutral B is supposed to be. And switching to Mithra, actually... Now that they're... Oh, switching back. Might have just switched to Mithra specifically for that one move. 
Oh, and there's a smash attack. Is that going to KO? That is. Epsilon puts himself on the board in Grand Finals. This the Power Legions. Kind of insane that it happened on a random character, of all things. Granted, WTKA has not been playing Falcon so far this tournament, but that's still not something I expected to see. All right, now we've got a, another random on Epsilon's part, but WTKA going back to the King DDD. I mean, like, I would say, well, yeah, do what's working for you, except this isn't what worked for you. It was, it was the Mithra that worked for you. Now we got a Pokemon trainer. <laughs> Again, it's going even. Like, this is WTKA's main, as far as we know. It's what got him most of the way through the tournament, for sure. Epsilon, just a random main? Does he just get, like, bonus character knowledge for every new character that he tries to play in tournament? Is that how this works? Seems to know his, uh, his switch-ups on the Pokemon trainer, at least. Up airs DDD off the top, and we're dead even again. Oh, sick grab from WTKA. Dash deck, not finding it. Great forward tilt coming out of WTKA. Is that a Cho Jojo reference? I don't think Jojo's characters would translate to Smash very well because they would spend too long monologuing about their moves. It's a lot of lag time. Not as bad as Goku would be, but... You definitely gotta think that's like multiple minutes of startup. Can't be good for the character. Up tilt. Gets a nice grab into forward air. Some good damage coming out from WCKA. He's pulled out to a full stock lead here. Looking to put the tournament away right here, right now. Does not get the down air. Gordo puts him off stage. TKA. Trying to go in with back airs. Oh, you know he's going out there for it. Doesn't find it. Doesn't matter. Actually, it might matter. Got dash attacked off the ledge. Starts to trying to go all the way off there for it. Respects the up and gets a nice back air. Hashtag nice back air. Does have rage, but is, you know, 150%. So... You gotta imagine that the WTKA has advantage here. Gets the forward air and puts the tournament away. WTKA is your winner. The 3 1 in set one of grand finals versus Epsilon. Congratulations to WTKA for bringing home all of the, uh, all the money that, for all I know, doesn't exist. I don't know if there's a prize to this. If there are prizes for it, it is uh, something that's monitored by your school, so you'll want to contact them about anything of the sort, but I haven't heard anything. All right. That is going to do it for the event. So thank you, everybody, for watching. We really appreciate having you all here. Uh, once again, if you are interested in following us, you can check us out at the link that I am about to put in the chat. Bravest Esports, the, the very first... Uh, I just did that wrong. There's an S at the end of that, guys. There's an S at the end of that. Don't click that. I made an oops. I made a whoopsie. 
There we go. There we go. There we go. That one. That one. That one. Go to that one instead. That one. Okay. Okay. Then, <laughs> uh, I heard a bunch of people saying they were excited for future events, and I am excited to do future events for you guys too. There are some straw polls so that if you are uh, trying to give feedback about when you would like these events to be, like what day of the week, or which game you would like to play, those are places where you can go to give us that information. Um, straw polls to let us know. And uh, if you're interested in seeing us again, please, by all means, you know, give the, the positive feedback that you have to your, your college folk. Um, your student activities people, I believe it's, uh, it's Columbia State Engage, I think is the name of the organization. Um, I think they've got a representative that's in our Discord, actually. If you, uh, That might be a good place to reach them or wherever else you've got on campus, you can let them know. But uh, thank you for having us out. We really appreciate it. We are Bravest Esports. Um, we are not your school. <laughs> we, were, we are contracted by your school. So uh, let them know if you want us back out again. And uh, until then, keep your esports scenes alive. Always go to your locals. Always thank your TOs at the end of it. So in that vein, I'm going to send a quick thank you and announcements to Syncrity, our TO, for holding it down for you all today. Um, make sure to uh, be appreciative of the effort that goes in behind the scenes as well as on the camera here. For the time being, that's going to be it for us. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure there is going to be a next time because they're asking about which game is going to happen next. So whatever that next time happens to be, we'll see you next time.